Hello, this is Lukar Zapotal from Satellite 6 Engineering, and in this short video, I'd like to show you um, a VLAN tagged or tagging provisioning um, in satellite. Uh, this is 6.8 early build. Uh, this is a feature that is not yet supported, however, we made that possible. So it is um, known to work, is the, is the term we use. Um, and that might change in, in future versions, but uh, uh, for now, uh, it's something that uh, does work. Um, so the scenario is we want to boot um, uh, unknown systems over uh, uh, either Pixie or, or HTTP UFI uh, into Discovery and get them provisioned all over a, a network card that has that is connected to a network which requires VLAN tagging. So in order to do that, what I have here is in my provisioning templates, this is pretty much standard installation with the discovery plugin turned on, which is I guess by default if you don't turn it off. Uh, we'll be using Pixie Grub 2. I'll be showing this on uh, EFI, uh, actually. And to get things a little bit more spicy, I'll be using um, a brand new feature, which is uh, being introduced in Satellite 6.8, which is EFI HTTP boot. Uh, basically, uh, when booting systems from network, um, a Pixie is an option for biosystem. And by systems and for EFI systems, there's um, usually uh, this comes with a legacy Pixie option. Uh, uh, but the EFI and firmware, the uh, latest version, um, that would be like five years old hardware usually, supports what's called the EFI HTTP boot, which actually is similar to Pixie. And DHCP request is made and the DHCP server respond with. Uh, uh, with uh, an, an option uh, that specifies a URL uh, and then the firmware fetches from this URL uh, an executable, an EFI executable and, and starts it which in our case is uh, will be grub bootloader and grub bootloader then um, uses the same firmware stack or network stack to boot, uh, sorry, to, to download configuration file over HTTP and then uh, you know boots the uh, installer and then inst install the initialized network and um, and carries on with the installation. Now for VLAN we'll be doing everything with tagging. So um, uh, in the Fiverr setup, uh, I'll be using a Libre VM. I have entered the uh, setup and set the VLAN ID. Uh, to in my case 13. Now here in this uh, discover pixigrub underscore discovery snippet, I've created a new entry here, which is called um, uh, which is uh, a copy of EFI uh, discovery EFI VLAN. So I am adding a FDI dot VLAN dot primary equals 13. This is my tag I need to have in order to uh, communicate with my satellite. Uh, note that there are two uh, options here, EFI and EFI HTTP, and the same for uh, PC, like BIOS. This is actually a workaround for an existing bug in Grub, which will be resolved in upcoming uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Uh, so these entries will disappear in future versions. Uh, actually, I th actually, it's not even necessary in 6.8, so we might even remove that. Uh, um, the workaround was that uh, the path uh, grub2 had a problem with a relative path, so an absolute path had to be used in order to boot. But this this has been, has been already fixed. Uh, we need to wait uh, until this is released you know, with the uh, rel update. So still, the entry is there. Yeah, we need to keep the entry uh, because the EFI HTTP boot does actually work on an older release of Grub, uh, but we'll remove that uh, in the future. So, and if you have a newer Grub, uh, 
if you uh, have a grub from uh, Red Enterprise Linux 7. Point, the next one, I believe. I'm not sure which one is the next. Uh, then you can actually use even the only the first option, uh, which is my case. I have upgraded my grub to the latest and greatest version, which is already fixed. Anyway, uh, back to our goal, which is. Uh, you need to add a FDI VLAN primary here. That's all you need to do. It's a good idea, of, of course, to do for debugging. Uh, FDI uh, SSH equals one and FDI root password equals whatever I had in my case. This is by, by, by default uh, SSH is turned off and root uh, count is locked. But if you run into networking issues, you can sign in and investigate network manager and state of networking on the discovery node for production you don't want to use that um, so yeah i've already booted my host and it should be discovered now yeah so i have a boot uh, i have a host here which has been discovered over vlan network so i should see actually that the interfaces detected uh, are two actually ht ht uh, a the H uh, zero and point thirteen. So this is like virtual interface, and this one is a primary interface or the base interface. Um, also, the fact called VLAN should be also available here, um, and also a couple of other VLAN uh, network manager primary and and primary a couple of. Uh, effects which are gathered from network manager are also also uh, available um, now uh, what i'm going what i'm going to do is now i want to provision this from this host i'll be using http i'm, I'm, I'm actually using centos here uh, of course this will would work with uh, synced content satellite content um, one thing to note is that this host has been discovered with the EDH uh, network device name. And this will work with uh, CentOS 7. Uh, however, if you install CentOS 8, this might not get or installed because in CentOS 8, the, uh, the um, libvirt driver, uh, virt IO driver, is now according to the new naming conventions in Red Hat 7 and the there was a bug as that made it into 7.0 and delivered uh, virt io network cards are named in the old naming scheme and this couldn't be this couldn't be fixed because that would be regression like reboot after an update would destroy network configuration so this this fix has been postponed uh, up until CentOS 8 or RHEL 8. So if you and from a discovery image is based on CentOS 7. So uh, I haven't tested installation of 8 version, but in that case you'd need to probably. Um, I'll show you where uh, you need to probably change those uh, identifiers. So uh, I'm gonna um, install CentOS uh, 7. And I'm just going to check that here I have the configuration correctly set up. For uh, Enterprise Linux 8, you need to change this identifier to um, you know, ENP or whatever the identifier is for your hardware, actually, because we are moving, because this covered host is RHEL 7 only at the moment, or CentOS 7 only. Um, so that's the only thing I need to, or you need to pay attention for me, it's just you know uh, I'm not I'm, I'm starting the seven version, uh, so it's uh, it's just uh, you know uh, it should work just fine. So I'm going to check Pixie Grub two template, and here as you can see, this is the reason why this uh, uh, this identifier must match because uh, Anaconda uh, requires this VLAN equals uh, identify of the VLAN, uh, which must include the ID correctly, so in this case VLAN 13, colon, and then 
you need to have the valid uh, network uh, card identifier here, which is in this case H A at uh, zero. Um, and if you won't have this correctly, it won't it wouldn't boot, right? Um, so that's pretty much. Uh, that's pretty much it. I can now see that the system is booting up and starting provisioning. Just let's just quickly check uh, uh, the second template template for this provisioning uh, workflow, which is provisioning template and kickstart. So here, again, I'm not using a uh, Catello. I'm not using a uh, sync content. I'm just have uh, my own uh, mirror here at home. So I'm, I'm fetching from from there, and uh, yeah, it's uh, DHCP. It's, it's like the standard uh, unchanged kickstart uh, template interface is uh, VLAN 13, and yeah, then it, it installs this the system. Uh, in this case, it's booting up over each uh, UFI HTTP or HTTP UFI. Uh, so that's the pixel loader option. If you set this to grub to UFI HTTP, and uh, so I will orchestrate the uh, DHCP uh, changes in in a way that uh, the file name option on the DHCP server will be set to the URL of the of the of the capsule, which is associated with with uh, with uh, the subnet so in my case i have a subnet uh, c199 and here i have a http boot capsule set i need to set this because uh, on for http efi http boot uh, we are not using tftp so tftp although it's enabled and you know active here on this network on this subnet uh, we are not using that for http booting we are using uh, uh, this feature uh, capsule feature so it must be set. Uh, also note that um, for HTTP, Capsule usually runs, by default it installs on HTTPS endpoint only because that's the the default endpoint that Furman uh, or satellite server communicates with uh, Capsule. So you need to make sure of, uh, via an installer option that this uh, endpoint is enabled as well. Uh, or you can use actually um, a pixie loader, which is called uh, grub to HTTPS UFI. In that case, that would work. Um, although uh, you need to make sure that in the uh, firmware of the server, the server certificate is either enrolled or you need to set it to ignore server certificate if, if that's, that's unknown or invalid certificate. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, I'm just uh, the VM is now installing, and the system will reboot into. I'm not sure if you can see it. Um, I don't think so. Um, it will reboot uh, with a VLAN 13 tagged uh, primary interface. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, that's pretty much all I have for today. Um, so 